And welcome back to the channel, everybody here, and back to the playoffs here in the Emily Show 20 Custom League. And we got some good games here for you and a great episode for you here today as we get started with this series here between uh, the Crusaders and the Trojans. The Trojans uh, head in this series three games to one here as we play game five at, in Atlanta. So the Crusaders, a tall task in front of them to try and make it uh, out of this series as uh, they are down three games to one. They have to play one game here at home, and then they play two games on the road and uh, already off to not the greatest of starts. A three-run top of the first inning there by Little Rock. But Atlanta's offense is coming back a little bit here against Jeffrey Rodriguez. Base is loaded, and they only get one in that inning. The bases were loaded in that frame. They could have gotten more, and they did not. So Cal Contrell on the mound right now for Atlanta. And after a struggling first inning frame, he's put up a couple of scoreless innings here. As neither, nobody has scored in this second or this third inning. And uh, we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's still 3-1. to one. Miguel Haro, though, smashes his solo home run, though. That makes it a one-run bowl game. And a new pitcher here coming on for the Crusaders who comes through and gets the gets those three outs in the fifth. Two on a home run by Brian Reynolds. Though then another home run. Justin Scott launches another one. And that's a three run. Bottom of the fifth inning. And now Atlanta is ahead three to five. So now two men on here for Jeffrey Rodriguez. And there's a pinch hitter now. Louis Hamill up. Kevin Newman with a three run homer. His first home run of this series, I believe, and his third of the playoffs. Oh, my goodness, a home run by Cavaco. And craziness happening right now in this game. Back and forth, these two teams go. And a home run off the bench from Rowdy Telez, the second one of the inning. And, I mean, the third or the fourth home run. And the last couple of innings here by these teams trading punches right now. And a game, I mean, it was only 3-2 to two going into the bottom of the fifth. It's now a 6-7 to seven with Atlanta on top. So we go to the top of the seventh, and Joe Jimenez up now, and a caught stealing. Josh Bell gets a hit. Royce Lewis gets an RBI triple, and that's his fourth or fifth RBI of, this, of these playoffs. And then Jason Dominguez comes through with a big-time RBI double. And uh, the Little Rock Trojans taking the lead again here in the seventh. It's eight to seven. Now Miguel Geraldo. Now it's Cavoni Cavaco, six RBIs, and he gets his seventh with a sack fly to tie up the game. And uh, back and forth, this game, the craziest game of these playoffs right now. As uh, holy cow, Little Rock is just Little Rock at Atlanta right now, going back and forth. Eight to eight, the score is Logan Allen comes in out of the bullpen for the Trojans and he gets a clean top of the eighth there. We go into the bottom half now. Mitch, or Peter Carver on the mound for Little Rock. He's been pretty good in this series for the Trojans as Atlanta goes to their bench. As now they bring out Johan Lopez here for Little Rock and so despite a pretty bad season that he had in the regular year, he's pitched five good innings here in this postseason. Out of the bullpen comes Emilia Pagan here for the Crusaders. Jason Dominguez up in his second home run. He smashes his second bomb of the postseason. And what a monster homer. A two-run shot. It's 10-8. to eight. And now Atlanta is three outs away from falling in this series. The Trojans need three more outs. That's it. Now to punch their ticket to the World Series. And here we go. We're going to jump into this game. And we're going to jump into the bottom of the ninth. One of the better games of the entirety of this postseason. It's a really, really great game here back and forth. And Justin Scott starts the inning off here. He's only 2 for 21 in this series. Not having a great series. But, I mean, turn that around right now, right here. Down three games to one. And that is not a good start for... The Crusaders there, the one wanting to get back in the game. It's a ground ball and a ground ball out. So now here's Bryce Harper, who's having a great playoff. So batting 389 with a 485 on base and over 1,000 OPS. He's two for three in this game with a couple of singles and a ribby. So one of the better hitters on the team here. 
And now an 0-2 to him is down low, a change up below the zone. Matt Strom here coming out of the pen to try and get these last three outs of this bowl game and of this series right now. So here comes a 1-2 and two after that missed pitch. And that one is a fly ball out to deep left center. Still racing back. And it is over the wall and gone. Bryce Harper with a solo bomb. And I don't think that's his first home run of this. Of this. It might be his first home run of this series. Probably is. But it, his second home run I would expect at least to the playoffs. And it's now a 10-9 game here in the ninth. So after the ground out, you get something good and you get a run closer here if you're Atlanta. And a great swing there by Bryce Harper. I mean, simply one of the better hitters in the entire league and uh, one of the best hitters in this playoffs right now for Atlanta. He continues to mash. And there's a ground ball. That one is going to get on through and into left. There's the tying run, and now on base. And after a quick out number one here, Atlanta is starting something in this bottom of the ninth inning. But a double play would end the game, and it's a line shot, but it's right to Jason Dominguez out there in center who makes the catch for the out. And a monster second out there of Coney Cavaco. So Jason Dominguez gets that out, and now Atlanta is down to their final out here of their season here. And here is Shea Langoliers, 0 for 4 in this game. And he's only batting 147 with a single RBI in these playoffs. So that's who this game is going to come down to right now here for, for the Crusaders. One of, their wor one of their worst hitters here in the playoffs. But he can turn that all around here with one swing. The first pitch to Langoliers is a deep fly ball in the left center. Nobody moves. And that ball is gone! Shea Langoliers, his first homer of the playoffs, keeps Atlanta alive in this series. They win it 11 to 10. Unbelievable finish. In an unbelievable game, in game five, Atlanta down to their last out, and they are not dead yet. What a swing. Shayla Galeers, who, I mean, really only had three or four hits in the entire playoffs going into that at bat, has just saved the season for the Crusaders. And it was pretty much a no-down homer. Nobody moved out there in the outfield. And there you see it land. Wow, what an incredible swing and what an incredible inning there. Three runs in that bottom of the ninth for Atlanta, the second walk-off of the series. The first since the game, since game one. And Miguel Geraldo gets the player of this game, kind of surprisingly, but I guess Lingaleos only did have one hit in the entirety of this game. We go Geraldo, though. Two for three with a home run, an RBI, and a run scored. So he had a pretty good game, I would say. But what a ridiculous game that was. 14 hits by both teams. And the Trojans lose that game and lose a chance to close the series out on the road, 11-10. to 10. So the Crusader is still a long task in front of them to be able to climb back in this series. They got to win two games here in Little Rock on the road. But they do have themselves a chance. They keep their playoff hopes alive with that win. Now another news, another business. We're going to go and, and see what happens in this American League Championship Series. The Crusaders just avoided elimination. Can the Reapers do the same here in Game 4 and beat the Red Wings? The Red Wings have not lost yet in these playoffs. They're 6-0 and and they look to just sweep the series here and sweep this uh, Houston team here in front of their hometown crowd in Reaper Stadium right now as we get a look at the stadium there and we get a look at this snapshot of what this series has looked like and I mean outside of the first game you know it's been some close games that of course that game one was a pitcher's duel and really close to the end but Alaska I mean seven to four and four to two uh, 
Reaper's offense has been pretty sluggish overall in this series, and that's part of the reason that they have just not been able to get a win here against uh, the Red Wings. The Red Wings have just been a better team overall these playoffs. So we will be quick managing this bowl game right now here until we have to jump in, until we can jump into the uh, towards the end of it maybe as Robbie Ray is coming on and pitching for Houston and uh, well through two starts in the playoffs you know only 7.2 innings so I think he came out of the bullpen in one of his starts but uh, not a great not, not a great stat line for him so far in his limited uh, postseason action but now we get a Mutter Rosario who is you know, only batting 222 one of the weaker hitters on the team right now but he will start the game off and there's a home run as Amundo Tahara just immediately gets a big time swing and a big time home run and the lead for Alaska here early in the first. Andrew Vaughn gets a big time triple. Chris Bryant will bring him in on a sack fly, his 10th RBI of the postseason. And now Robbie Ray looking to settle in to a little bit of a rhythm here. Here's Wilson well Contreras, three home runs, eight RBIs. He does not get anything going there. That's a one, two, three. Bottom of the second inning. Robbie Ray still pitching here. That's a stolen base attempt that does not go correctly there. Mano Tejada get that second home run of the playoffs for him and there's a home run from Anthony Santander as he crushes that one to give Houston a 2-1 lead. So that's a big time swing right there against Johnny Diaz pitching here for Alaska. Reyes Suarez gets on base with the walk. Now it's Andrew Vaughn. Base is clearing and that is going to be the end of the inning. Trey Mancini up four home runs, 13 RBIs and he just continues to rake he gets a double into the gap. Now Miguel Andujar, three homers and six RBIs, and he's going to get his seventh RBI as that's a base hit into right field. So it is a tie game here, 2-2. And a very close one here we have so far. To the top of the fifth we go as here's Riley Bell who gets on base again with a single. And there is Zorio. There is a big-time swing, his biggest swing of the playoffs so far as he gets an RBI double to make it 3-2. And now with Robbie Ray pitching here in the fifth, they're going to go into the bullpen, it looks like, for the Reapers. And let's see who they bring out of the bullpen. And Austin Voth is their man. He's not pitched great in 5.2 innings in the postseason, but he gets through the fifth inning there. And now a 3-2 game. Now Johnny Diaz here looking to settle in, but he actually gets taken out there, not getting through five innings. As Austin Voth here... Pitching in the seventh, he gets, or in the sixth, excuse me, and he gets through that inning. And now it's Chris Bryant, hardest, biggest hitter on this team. And a runner is thrown out at home as Bryant got the base hit that they were looking for there. But he does not score anything off of that. And so it's still a 3 2 game. Now, two men on here with only one man out. They're going to bring Austin Voth out of the game as Tejada is up in a big part of their order here. Base is loaded for. Do you know Navarro? And there's a strikeout, but Trey Mancini, oh, Trey Mancini could have broken the game wide open, but he is not, and it's still a 3-2 lead as uh, that nothing going in the bottom of the seventh, and again, the Reapers' offense here not doing the job as the pitching staff has been good, but the offense not really showing up yet, and Alex Reyes gets through the eighth inning unscathed and perfect, and he has not given up a run yet in the postseason. As Derwin Feldman, can he keep the game right where it's at? And he does with a 1-2-3. Top of the ninth, and well, here we go, folks. We got the bottom of the ninth inning, and Roberto Asuna pitching. Roberto Asuna, 3-for-3 three three in save opportunities in the playoffs. He's pitched 2.1 innings and has gotten, I mean, five strikeouts to zero walks. Has only given up, like, one hit. And so, uh, I mean, this is the best closer in baseball here. And uh, you're going to have to try and get something against him here. you got to get at least one run. As here is Chris Bryant, who, you know, has had a really good postseason, that's for sure. And he does get on base here. That's a walk outside fastball there. And so is Suna. A little shaky here out of the bullpen coming out as he does give up one of his few base runners, only the second base runner he's given up all postseason long, I think. And now it's Paul DeYoung. 0 for 3 in the game, and he swings and misses. Had a change up there below the knees. That was a beautiful pitch. And now Wilson Contreras, 0 for 3 in the game. 
And that's a line shot and into center field for a base hit. From first to third goes Chris Bryant. And there is the tying run at the corners here or at the corner 90 feet away for Houston. And that's what exactly what you needed Wilson Contreras to do right there. Now let's turn Nuno Nunez up. And all he needs to get now is a set is a fly ball deep enough into the outfield as he's one for three in this game. Has not done very well in this series or in the postseason. Only batting 143. But I mean you wave away all of that now if you can get the out or if you can tie this game. Now they won one, it's a ground ball, and oh boy, this could be two, they get one, and the throw to first is in time. A double play ends the series and punches the ticket to the World Series for Alaska. They'll make it to the Fall Classic for the second straight year, and they have swept the Houston Reapers. 7-0 and oh in the postseason, and this is going to be a team that's, I mean, going to be hard to beat uh, with whoever comes out of that National League division. Congrats to the American League champions, second straight year. And the Red Wings now, I mean, they need four more wins to just capture that elusive trophy that they were so close to getting last year. And Anderson Dahada mod by his teammates as he of course had that big home run earlier in the game I think that was maybe back in the first inning and I mean only one for four but he gets the player of the game and uh, man some more good shots here of the celebration by Alaska and I mean this Red Wings team 8-7-0 in the postseason the best team in the American League all year uh, I think they're going to be certainly very very difficult to beat in the World Series as that series wrapped up pretty quickly a sweep and I mean of course you have it they had a chance right there Houston did to uh, just to win that game and to keep alive in that series they had a runner on third base but they do not score them so there's a look at that bracket in Alaska punching their ticket now so we're continuing now we're going to focus solely on this NLCS between Atlanta and uh, Atlanta and the Trojans here as it is game six of this series and hopefully for Little Rock they get you know a little bit of a better uh, they get a better, better spot here to close out this series at home right now as we go into Little Rock and uh, this is again game six so Trojans still lead this series three games to two they got two chances to close it out at home and uh, now they know, both of these teams know who they're going to play in the World Series. And, uh, of course, they're not worried about that right now because they're worried about winning this winning this series right now, both of them. So that's on the back of their minds, I would assume. But you do know who you're going to play as we get a snapshot of the series recap there and some really good close games in this series, three games that were decided by one run. And, uh, I mean, it's, you know, a couple 7-4 to four games in there as well. So just a really good series that we've got between these two teams, of course. And Jacob Junis facing off against Dylan C. So the ace of the Crusaders looking to force a game 7 and a deciding game here in this series. And so, by the way, we're going to do another quick manage of this game. I did actually get my uh, wisdom teeth removed a couple of days ago. So... I don't know if you can tell if that's you know coming through in the recording at all, but I uh, just needed to get back on the microphone and uh, get this get this, this you know series finished up. We should only have one, maybe two more episodes uh, left in this entire franchise. We're going to try and get the World Series done in you know a couple of in just a couple of episodes so we can finish this series up and I'll give some final thoughts about you know what this series was like and uh, just. Thanking guys for you know the people that did stuck by and watch this series from start to finish, uh, but that'll come in the next episode here as we're again focusing in on this game six and Shailene Galiers man had that home run that walk off homer in the last game when he gets a triple there and uh, so he's at third base and there's an RBI Jesse Winker who's been incredible I mean 
batting near 400, and that guy gets another RBI on that single. And now base is loaded here for Justin Scott. Fielder's choice, and there's Harper, and he walks in a run. So, man, a big two runs there by Atlanta in the bottom of the third. Here's Luis Campusano, who hasn't done much since the really good, since the game he got six RBIs in earlier in this series, but he's got on base there. That's an RBI, that's a run scored. Only Adamas gets a run in, and it's a two to one lead now as we go into the bottom of the fourth. And another close tight end, probably looking like a pitcher's duel type of game here. Jacob Junis gets give up a home run though. Jesse Winker, man, what an incredible what an incredible game he's having right now. Two for two with a couple of RBIs and another home run. What an incredible playoff season he's having right now. And uh, just ridiculous. So now Lewis Hamill brought out and he does not do anything there. So bullpen time for Little Rock as they're, as they're down right now, three to one. And their offense has been pretty shut down by Dylan C so far. So who do they go to out of the pen here, which has been pretty consistent for them. And they go with Joanna Lopez, who gives up the third home run in the playoffs to Bryce Harper. And that one was a, not a good swing right there. And now down by three with Dylan Cease absolutely rolling. Not a good look right now as they're into the seventh inning here. And their offense has got to get something going for the Trojans. And out of the bullpen here, they're going to Bring in another pitcher, and it looks like it's going to be Acevedo uh, or Peter Carver, who's been good in these playoffs. Is up that hit, though, and gives up a RBI double to Justin Scott, his fifth RBI of the playoffs. So Atlanta adds one more run to this advantage. They got two runners on base now here, and they do not add any more. But Dylan Cease, man, he's still got enough energy to maybe go the whole game right now. And, uh, well, that's another strikeout, and that is another scoreless inning. So here is Rex Morrison, and uh, he will get a strikeout of the side there on the top of the ninth. But Cody Keller coming on, and that's just a dominant performance by the Atlanta Crusaders, who just came in, and their pitching staff was incredible. Dylan Cease pitched a great ball game, and, uh, well... The bullpen came in, shut down the door, and uh, we have a game seven on our hands here between Atlanta and Little Rock now as the as the uh, Crusaders, man, down three games to one, and uh, they are now only one win away from snatching victory in the from the jaws of defeat right now in this series. But they got to take care of business in game seven. So a five to one a 5-1 to one win here. And uh, getting a look at that line score, Bryce Harper had another great game. He had two RBIs and a homer. Um, although, also, in that game, Jesse Winker played very well as, as well. And so that is going to do it here in this game six. So not any moments that were good enough for us to kind of jump in there and, and uh, take control of, but Dylan Cease... Yeah, I kind of figured that uh, he would be the player of the game after a master class pitching performance that he had as Jake Fridley and Jose Martinez, a couple bench guys there looking at him. Uh, but in that eight innings, only three hits allowed, one walk, one earned run, and eight strikeouts. So, I mean, just a ridiculously good game right there by Dylan Cease. And, um, I mean, only three hits for the Trojans, not what you needed from your offense right there. And a and the game you wanted to win in front of your home fans, and that is going to force a game seven. So here we go. And this series, I mean, you probably would not have ever guessed it, but this series is now at a winner or go home game, tied at three games apiece. So we saw Little Rock win the first game. We saw the Crusaders tie the series up, and then we saw Little Rock win two games on the road in Atlanta. And we saw the Crusaders have that crazy walk-off in that crazy Game 5. And then a win out on the road in Little Rock in Game 6. Now they're going to have to do it one more time here on the road in Game 7. One more snapshot of that of the series recap there again. And again, Little Rock win Game 1, 3, and 4. And meanwhile, the, uh, the Crusaders winning Games 2, 
five and six in this series. So here we go, Alex Young on the mound right here in this game seven for the Atlanta Crusaders as postseason time and game seven officially underway. On the mound here for Little Rock is going to be Benito Hernandez, who through two starts in these playoffs has been very, very good in 13.1 innings and only a, a uh, 203 ERA right, with a 113 whip and 13 strikeouts. He's been really good, 1 0 record. And here's Brian Reynolds, who's only 5 for 26 in the postseason with a 192 average. He's got a couple of home runs and four RBIs, but honestly, for this team's leadoff hitter, not really doing the job of a leadoff hitter like he should right now. Now one and two to him, and that's a ground ball that's going to be stopped by the third baseman. Go over to first and in time, so that'll get the first out of the game, and that'll bring us to this this, this lineup here. As you already saw, just Brian Reynolds, Jesse Winker batting 372 there. Bogart's batting 239. Justin Scott only batting 200. Bryce Harper batting 425. Miguel Geraldo batting 342. Tony Cavaco at 233, and Shane Langoliers batting 144. And then the pitcher's spot. And here's Jesse Winker. I mean, 8 for 25 in, the, in this series, three home runs. And I believe that's in six RBIs. He has been really, really good in this series and in the postseason entirely. And he drives one over the wall, out and left. All right, and right, excuse me. So Jesse Winker with his fourth home run of the playoffs. And man, oh man, a quick start to game seven for Atlanta. It's one nothing. I mean, talking about how incredible Jesse Winker has been in the postseason for Atlanta, and he just continues to prove it and mash the baseball there. What a big time swing. And now it's up to Jesse, so Xander Bogart, excuse me, who's only got one RBI. And only five hits. I believe that's in this series. Uh, not in the entire postseason. But anyway, Villanueva, it's not been very good in this series. I'll tell you that. Uh, but now Atlanta up one and nothing. How about that? So here's an 0 one. That's a swing and a miss. Uh, right through the fastball there at 94 miles per hour. And now uh, getting the sign, shaking his head yes. And uh, going into the windup here is the Pitcher, and that's a swing and a miss on a fastball high in the zone, and Benito Hernandez gets his first K of the game, and that was a beautiful, a beautiful pitch and a beautiful high fastball right there. And there's a ground ball by Justin Scott that'll end the inning, uh, but in the first, Jesse Winker launching a home run over the wall in right field. And 1-0, uh, Crusaders have a lead in Game 7 after the top of 1. So we have, here is Alex Young in for the bottom of the first, and look at how good he's been. In two starts, a 1-0 record, and a 1.32 whip, a year rank with a .08 whip. Only four walks to 13 strikeouts. He has been incredible in these playoffs and that's the type of hitter that's the type of pitcher you're gonna have to overcome in this game seven and with I mean the Trojans already behind in this series are already, already behind in this game one to nothing they're gonna have to do something here to try and catch back up now a two and two count here to Kevin Newman the leadoff hitter and a swing and a miss and a pitch inside an 85 mile an hour off speed pitch and Newman looking silly on that one. The first strikeout of the game for Alex Young. And uh, man, oh man, what a nasty pitch that one was. So now batting second here is William Adamas, who takes a look at strike one high. And uh, oh, he's batting 318 with a home run and five RBIs, a 400 on base in the postseason. He's been very good in the playoffs, although he had that one home run, and that home run came way back in, you know, the opener of these playoffs. That's a swing and a miss for strike three. I believe he, I mean, he had a home run in the divisional round against Chicago, and he hasn't had anything since, but there's a snapshot of what that bracket looks like, of course, the winner of this game. They're going to play the 
Red Wings here who have not lost in the playoffs in the World Series. Here's Jordan Alvarez, who again, that's a, just a snapshot of this uh, series. Only five for 24 with two home runs and four RBIs in this series, but in the playoffs overall, he's hitting pretty well as he really, uh, I mean, he has a near 300 average. And that is a drive by Reynolds to the wall and he can't get it. As Brian Reynolds leapt at the wall and he can't bring it back in the park. And Jordan Alvarez, his third home run of the series, of the series, and uh, his fourth or fifth of the playoffs, and it is a tie game. So how about a one-one tie now in the first inning? Both teams trading home runs in the first, a 413-foot homer there, and now it's Josh Bell. Only four for 22 with one RBI in this series here. Not hitting very well, uh, but man, oh man, what a great start here to this game seven. As trying to steal second base is Shohei Otani, and uh, he can't get there. He's, he's thrown out at second base by Shane Langoliers. And so after one, and both teams with one run and one hit, and uh, we are knotted up. We go into the top of the second, seven for 23 in this series from Cody Gavaco, batting near 300 over 300 in this series. He's been pretty good in the NLCS as he gets another hit there. He's eighth of the series, and it's a ground ball single up the middle. So all over to third goes the runner, and it's men in the corners here with one away for Langoliers. Six for 23, that home run that he hit earlier. Uh, in game five, three home runs, and batting 261 overall in the postseason. Or batting, I think, 261 in this series. As uh, now he's two for, now a two and two count on him. As Kavako looks in and swings and misses. At a fastball low, great, great pitch by Benito Hernandez. And that's a monster second out with men on the corners as uh, it is now two men gone here in the second. And the pitcher gets hit. So that's Alex Young who gets plunked there on the leg and did not a great look to hit the pitcher of the other team, especially when, you know, you got two outs in the inning. So now it's the top of the order that's going to come up here. And uh, bases loaded situation. Chance to add on to the lead, or break this tie. Ground ball stopped by Josh Bell. And they're gonna go over to first with Hernandez with the out. And so, uh, man, nothing happening in that second inning. A hit, a walk, and a hit batter, but no runs. As we go to the bottom of the second, here's Luis Camposano, who's, I mean, seven for 19 in this series with three home runs and seven RBIs. He's been ridiculous in this series, although he hasn't done that great in the last couple of games. He didn't get anything going in game five or game six, I don't think, and now he's got an 0-2 count against him here. Swing and a miss. That's a strikeout on a 91 mile an hour fastball right there by Alex Young, his third strikeout of the game. Both pitchers with three of them in this game through two innings, and uh, nothing happening in the bottom of the second for Little Rock. So like every, almost every game of this series, expect this one to be really close and be decided down the stretch as here's Bryce Harper who fouls that one and two off. And uh, now Benito Renata is gonna come in again with him. The man on first base here. And uh, here comes a one and two. Swing and a miss. It's the strikeout, it's fourth. And a clean inning, or not a clean inning, but a but no runs there by Hernandez in the top of the third. He did give up a walk, but now he comes up here in the bottom of the third inning. And uh, does have a hit in the playoffs, I believe. Uh, but, you know, he is the pitcher, so here comes a 3-2. and two. And that's a swing and a miss on a four-seam fastball outside the zone. That was a good pitch by Alex Young, and I know it is the pitcher, but still a good pitch there. And that's number four, and now we go to... Fernandez here in the top of the fourth swing and a miss. And man, oh man, these two pitchers trading punch outs right now. That's Hernandez's fifth of the game. And I mean, we just string a, string a string of K's here in these last couple of innings as I mean, these pitchers 
appeared to have settled in after both of them had, you know, a rough, kind of a rough first inning giving up those home runs that they gave up, but since then have been almost perfect. John Ball over to fourth. That's going to be in time. And so Kevin Newman gets the out and the final out of the top of the fourth inning. And we go into the middle of the fourth now. Shohei Otani is coming up and only batting, two, you know, batting 277 with three home, or three RBIs. I don't know if he has a home run yet in the playoffs. As that is a strike and 0-2 uh, now. He did have that walk-off in game one, if you can remember. And uh, here comes 0-2 to him now. Swing and a miss. That's a nasty off-speed pitch in the dirt in the bottom of the zone. And Otani looking at silly. Great pitch out in front of it is Shohei. Number five for Alex Young tonight. And now number one in the inning. Now two down in the frame. And here's the batter. Swing and a miss. And Josh Bell also strikes out on an inside pitch there. And Alex Young, I mean, impressive. Hasn't given up a hit. Hasn't given up a base runner since the whole one back in the first. So now here's Alex Young coming up in the top of the fifth inning for Hernandez. And you kind of know maybe what's likely happening here. And uh, yep, it's another strikeout. That's the number. That's number six for Hernandez in this game. And that's one out here in the fifth inning. As a, that is a strike on the inside corner to Jesse Winker, who again batting two seven, three seventy, not eight in the playoffs, and has that home run earlier in the game. And so here we go. Here comes a one and two, or one and one, excuse me. And it's a ground ball. Up the hole and over to second for one. And the first, it is a double play. And a pretty big one there at that. Ending the middle of the sixth inning. So Nana has only three hits through six. And only one hit right now for the Little Rock Trojans. They need something to go on and something to happen here in their favor right now. They have just done nothing on offense recently as Alex John gets a strikeout, another one. That pitch was way inside, and Campusano can't help but swing at it. And what a game from Alex Young. That's the seventh of the, of the game in the strikeout department and through five minutes. My, oh, my. Has he been really good. Seven strikeouts in five innings. And now Xander Bogart's up, and he's looking to avoid a K, and he can't. Swing and a miss, an off-speed pitch in the dirt. Hernandez with his 6K of the game. And uh, my oh my, he has 83 pitchers in the night. And I mean, what a ridiculous pitchers duel we have now as these two pitchers have just not gone, not really given up anything. I mean, if besides the first two innings by Hernandez, he's been excellent. There's a ground ball, that's through. And a big hit, and with 88 pitches, you kind of wonder now, are they going to go to the pen? And it looks like they will as uh, Bonita Hernandez comes out of the game here. 5.2 innings and uh, three hits, so four hits, excuse me, one run on four hits, a walk, a hit batter, and seven strikeouts in the game. He was really good. And uh, what he giving? he's given his team a chance to win this one, but the offense not able to do anything in response to him. And they bring out Tony Gonsolin, who has not really been that great in the playoffs. And take that back, 5.1 innings by Hernandez. Still a really good game, though, by him. And that's a line drive, and that's going to be down. It's going to roll to the wall. Bryce Harper batting 415, and he's going to get himself another extra base hit. A double into the gap in center. And now two men on here, only one man out in scoring position, both of them. Here we go. Match Drum in the biggest spot of this game. And here's Miguel Geraldo batting 325 in these playoffs. And he's 0 for 2 in this game. How big would it be for him to come through? And it looks like they're going to go with the intentional walk. And I guess they decided that after the first ball was thrown, they just didn't want to mess with the batter there. And so the bases are now loaded again for the second time in this game for the Atlanta Crusaders. 
Now it's Coney Cavaco batting 244, two homers, seven ribbies, and uh, how about a how about a time for a home run or RBI number eight or home run number three? But bases juiced. Here comes a one and two on the corner, top part of the zone, and a strikeout. What a pitch by Tony Gonsolin. Right there at the top of the zone. My goodness, was that baby nasty. So now base is still loaded as that is a strike to Shailene Galeers. And you get a look at what the uh, what it looks like here. Miguel Gerardo, Bryce Harper, and Justin Scott on base right now with two down in the inning. Here it comes to Lane Galeers. As it's a swing and a miss. Tony Gonsolin comes in and gets two punch outs after giving up the double to stop the lead and uh, keep this tie right there. Wow, what a gutsy couple of batters right there from Tony Gonsolin. Bases loaded, one man out, and nothing, nothing for the Atlanta Crusaders. How about that? Well, bottom of the sixth, that's another strikeout, but way, way in the dirt, and no chance to hit that ball, as that's number eight for Alex Young. And uh, now he's got a man, nobody on here. For Lee Adamas, who swings and misses at a nasty off-speed pitch down and outside. My goodness, man. Nine strikeouts here through six innings and only one hit by Alex Young. Ridiculous stuff. Here's Matt Strom out of the bullpen for the Trojans, and uh, he's kind of had a hard time of it in 5.1 innings so far. A 6.75 ERA, but he is, you know, batting, starting it off with the pinch hitter in the bottom of the order is just so in tuna. So that's going to be it. They're going to take Alex Young out of the game after six ups, absolutely incredible innings. I mean, six innings, one hit, one run, nine Ks, and a just ridiculous game from... Um, from Alex Young in game seven, a win or go home game, and that's a strike three to the pinch hitter, Yelso Atuna. The man, oh man, who is gonna win? It seems that it feels to me like whoever scores next in this game is gonna win this one here right now. That's what this game has the feelings of right now. This has been an exceptional game seven, and uh, just what an episode this has been. As now a one and two pitch here from Match Drum. Looking to get another K. And Reynolds cannot catch up. He swings early at that fastball. And uh, that is strikeout number two in the inning for Strom. And now here is Jesse Winker. He's also got two strikes on him. And he swings and misses. So Matt Strom coming out of the pen strong as he gets three Ks. A strikeout of the side in the top of the seventh. That was impressive. And now in the seventh inning stretch, Still tied at one. Nobody's scored since the first inning in this game. Now here is Coney Kella, who has been okay, just all right in seven innings to this point in the playoffs. Not an incredible stat line there. And here's Shohei Otani, 271 on the average. And he's got a man on here. The first base runner since the very first inning of this game, I would think. That's a strikeout. Inside corner. Great pitch right there. Strike three call, then Otani looking back to the bench. Tenth over strikeout for Crusaders pitching staff. There's number 11 as that ball is also on the corner. And Josh Bell has some words with the umpire going back to his dugout. He didn't think that one got the zone, but it does. And man, oh man, a couple of monsters. K is right there with a man on base, and now it's Jason Dominguez who, uh, I mean, really, or Horace Lewis, excuse me, who hasn't done, done much. He has a ground ball, and that's going to be an out over to second in time. So, Kella gets a 1-2-3, bon or not a 1-2-3 bottom of the seventh, but uh, he does get through that seventh inning and still little walk stuck at only one hit. So a walk by Kella in that inning, and uh, ridiculous. Now they go to the eighth, and it's still tied at one, and again, Whoever scores next probably wins this game right now. Rex Morrison out of the pen for the Trojans. And uh, he's uh, not been great in four innings so far in the playoffs. He's given up, you know, has an ERA of nine. 
And here's Bryce Harper, who's still batting over 400 for the postseason. He had a double back in the sixth inning, and he's got a full count on him now. Right here. So let's see, it's a three and two. Swing and a miss. An 86 mile an hour high. Cheese, and it gets him. So that's a great inning by Rex Morrison, a one, two, three frame. And the bullpens for both teams doing their jobs right now is here is Benjamin Jost, who has been one of the most reliable guys out of the pen for Atlanta and this holds in the whole postseason. 7.2 innings and has only an ERA of 1.17. He's got two on here with one man out for Lily Adamas, who takes that slider as a strike. And Adamas 0 for 3 in the game so far. The average dipping below, four, uh, below 300 for the first time in the playoffs. And now here comes a 2-2. Two and two, And it's a fly ball, shallow into right. And that should be caught. And it will be by Bryce Harper off the shoe tops. And that is going to end the eighth. So the Trojans finally get their second hit of the night. But now we're in the top of the ninth inning. And uh, still not it at one. So X Morrison still pitching right now. And here is an 0-2 to Coney Cavaco as it is high and upstairs trying to locate with that fastball, that four-seamer up there. And that is ball number one. And here is Coney now with a one and two count. And there's a swing and a miss. A slider. Outside for strikeout number one, two for Morrison and out number two in the ninth inning. One out away from sending this to a walk-off opportunity for the Trojans. But now we'll have to face Jay Langoliers, who I mean hasn't done it, who hit that walk-off home run in game five to keep the postseason hopes alive for Atlanta, if you remember, but Overall, only batting 171 in the playoffs. 0 for 3 in the game right now with the strike on in his last at bat. So here we go. Rex Morrison leaning in, and here comes the 1 0 delivery. A fastball deep in the left. There goes Otani. He's to the wall. And it's over his head. And into the and into the seats. Home run. Shea Langoliers. He's done it again. The two most clutch swings of the series. And Atlanta has taken a two to one lead. Can you believe it? Shea Langoliers, a walk off in game five, and now the go ahead homer in game seven. Absolutely ridiculous. And now Luis Acevedo comes on. His job is to get to the bottom of the ninth with the lead for the Trojans standing only at one. And I mean, the Trojans only have two hits in the entire game. Now we got men on the corners here with two men out. So the Trojans are in trouble right now. And the Crusaders looking to add on to their lead even here. The 0-2 swing and a miss. He went around to Jesse Winker. That's the end of the inning, but my, oh my, how about Langoliers? I mean, the two most clutch hits of the playoffs to this point both belong to the catcher for Atlanta. And now, here we go. Bottom of the ninth, it's Emilio Pagan, who, remember, did give up a run the last time he pitched back in the ninth inning of game five and uh, only you know he has a nine year array so he hasn't pitched incredibly this postseason as bottom of the ninth and it's Jordan Alvarez four home runs and ten RBIs in the playoffs I mean a great chance in their order three four and five and uh, he has gotten a big hit today but that's a ground ball to second and a throw to first not what you want if you are the Trojans here as they have one out now in the inning, and now it's two outs. Here's Josh Bell, only batting 225 in the get in this postseason, and now it's down to him. Last out of the series here 
for the Trojans who had a three to one lead in this series and were three outs away from a game five win. Now they're on the ropes. Down to the last strike here of their season potentially. Here comes the 0-2. It's an off-speed pitch! And it's way on on and missed! Four strike three! The Atlanta Crusaders have done it! What a comeback from behind three games to one. They are World Series bound! I mean, an incredible game five walk-off win, and somehow they win three in a row, including two on the road. And Shea Langoliers, the man who had that go-ahead bomb in the ninth, how about, I mean, without those swings, this would not be a possibility for Atlanta. Ridiculous, and Emilio Pagan Gets the player of the game for the shutdown bottom of the ninth inning in this one. What a series this was. Unbelievable. What a game seven here. And what a game five we had earlier in the episode. I mean, just incredible stuff here in the postseason. And uh, man, oh man, what a what an episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching this one here today. And uh, well, coming up next, it will be... The World Series. We'll have a Marlins franchise video out for you here in the next couple of days. Uh, but and the next time we'll see me in this series will be the World Series between the Red Wings and the Crusaders. So, guys, thank you for your uh, thank you for your support. Remember to subscribe. You've been listening to Loops from Mars. Have a great day, everybody, and God bless.